Hey, this your boy Lil Screen That Man. G's up, BME. G, 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 G Unit South. Let's get it poppin'. What up, guys? It's your boy Ali, and welcome to Hip Hop Forever. The 50 Cent and the Game Beef became public in 2005. Tension between the two artists spewed out into the streets. People were shot, diss tracks were made, and both rappers suffered numerous hits to their brands. However, despite being involved in a beef, 50 was still about his business, and he introduced a young rapper from Atlanta, Georgia into G-Unit called Little Scrappy. Before Little Scrappy signed to G-Unit Records, he was signed to Little John's BME label. He was discovered by Little John in a bar in Atlanta where he was performing. Little John liked Scrappy's performance. He thought Scrappy had stage presence, charisma, and the potential to be a star. So he decided to take Scrappy on the road with him. Little John put Scrappy in a couple of crunk classics like Never Ever, What You Gonna Do, No Problems, and F.I.L.A. Part of Little Scrappy's contract also contained an offer to produce a joint album with a group called Trillville from Atlanta. The project turned out to be a success, it is officially gold in the US, and most people would agree that it laid the foundation for Little Scrappy's career to grow on. Now at this point, Little Scrappy was building quite a buzz for himself. He had credibility because he was signed to Little John. He was slowly gaining the attention of the streets. However, all the momentum he acquired came to a screeching halt when he got hit in the face with a bottle during one of his shows. Little Scrappy lost a few of his teeth and he had to get reconstructive surgery to replace the ones that got knocked out. And as a result, Scrappy had to take time away from the game to recover. During his time away from the game, Scrappy recalls feeling isolated and pushed aside by the industry. Labels weren't reaching out to him. People that were close to him almost forgot that he existed. However, just when he was about to lose hope, 50 gave him a call. You see, some people might think that getting a bottle to the mouth is nothing. But I had half of my gums on the floor. You know what I'm saying? Nobody called me or nothing. No labels, nothing. But then again, 50 called me and he gave me some uplifting words and advice. From there, I got back on my feet, feeling real good, and I ended up hooking up with Dude. Little Scrappy signed to G-Unit Records after 50 reached out to him. He was a prominent member of the label for a few years. It seemed like he was in it for the long run, but he got released from his contract in 2008. So the question is, what happened to Little Scrappy on G-Unit Records, and what is he doing now? I hate to have blonde hair, still trying to find myself, fighting all the time. You know what I'm saying? Niggas cannot say. Niggas cannot say that I weren't real. Now in 2006, Little Scrappy did an interview with HipHopCanada.com. He got asked whether he felt any pressure about the sales performance of his upcoming album. We all know that 50 Cent was all about the numbers and record sales. He still talks about the number of records he has sold to this day. And you can't blame him for that, because if I were him, I would brag too. However, 50 made the public use numbers as a metric to determine the quality of an album. What's today's date? Today's... Uh, can, we get today's some, second. can we get some official numbers? Can we find out what they're trending? I know whole, you said it was 10,000. copies <laughs> Whenever he dropped an album, he would constantly brag about how well it was performing on the charts, and he would always find a way to compare his sales with those of other rappers. Every artist on G-Unit was expected to do numbers, and Little Scrappy was no exception. I mean, I'm just trying to kill all this other shit that's going on. All this unnecessary shit like songs that have no meaning. I want to feel something. I want to know that someone else is going through what I'm going through. Now clearly Little Scrappy dodged the question, he spoke more about his desire to make meaningful music and didn't talk about his ability to sell records, which leads me to believe that maybe Little Scrappy knew that there was a lot of pressure on him. G-Unit Records was not in its prime in 2006, they started to decline in popularity due to a number of factors that I've covered in my other videos, so candidly speaking Little Scrappy joined G-Unit at the worst possible time. In that same year Little Scrappy released his debut album called Bread to Die, Born to Live. It came in at number 24 on the Billboard 200 and sold 82,000 copies in its first week. Little John's beats are all over this album. He produced more than five songs and clearly he shaped the tone of this album. Other popular producers who contributed to this project include Bangladesh, Jake One, DJ Paul, Drummer Boy, and Kane Beats. The album also contains a track produced by Eminem called Lord Have Mercy. The album did have some decent features. Young Buck appeared on the remix to the album's lead single called Money in the Bank. Money in the bank. Yeah. 
3-6 Mafia made an appearance on a track called Posted in the Club. Young Jock made an appearance. 50 himself also lent his vocals to the album, as well as Olivia and a host of other artists. Evidently no expense was spared as far as the production and the features go. However, despite the album's star-studded lineup, it didn't do the numbers that fans of G-Unit were accustomed to. Tony Ayer's thoughts of a predicate felon came in at 215,000 copies sold in the first week. Those numbers were pretty decent, however, to some people, those numbers were weak for G-Unit standards. Evidently, Little Scrappy sold less than Tony Ayo, and that wasn't a good look for the Atlanta artist. In my opinion, Bread to Die, Born to Live was a good project. Money in the Bank, Lord Have Mercy and Get Right are my favorite tracks on the project. It appears Scrappy was trying to create an album that had substance, as well as club hits. He ditches the crunk sound a lot, and this desire to experiment with sounds is something that 50 was not too pleased about. It appears 50 was not impressed with Little Scrappy's Money in the Bank single. He wanted Scrappy to keep pushing that crunk sound that he was known for. And when Scrappy decided to do something else, 50 decided to back off and let Scrappy do him. Scrappy believes 50 was still feeling some type of way about the game situation and that's why he started falling back from his project. It's cool, it's cool. I was just with Tony Ayo the other night. He just wants to work man. 50 wants to work. 50 hated on my first single, Money in the Bank. He was like, what you gonna do? Throw money in the video? He wanted to keep the crunk thing going. We kind of fell out. He said, I'm just gonna chill out on the situation, but told me to use the situation. I keep in touch with Buck. I told 50 I would have never turned my back on Buck. 50 was kind of tainted by the game situation. He was up on me, but kind of falling back at the same time. Now speaking of the game, the game and Scrappy nearly got into a fight in 2007 during Atlanta's annual 107.9 birthday bash concert. Sources say the game got on stage and started going at 50 and the rest of G-Unit while little Scrappy was in attendance. Scrappy was officially a member of G-Unit at the time. He felt like the game was being disrespectful to him in his hometown of Atlanta, so he met up with the game backstage to sort out their differences. Apparently little Scrappy yelled out, I see you niggin to the game and the rest of his entourage and started walking towards them. The pair got into a shouting match, words were exchanged, but luckily it didn't escalate further and it didn't get to a point where someone got hurt. Scrappy made a wise move by choosing not to confront the game physically. If he had done so and someone actually got hurt, I'm pretty sure he would have regretted that decision because one year following this incident, Scrappy left G-Unit Records. Now the game and Scrappy do have some tracks together. Yeah, I want it with the South Side. South Side. Hey. It appears that beef wasn't anything personal, nobody got hurt, so the pair decided to move past their issues. Now in 2008, this Scrappy announced that he would not be releasing another album through Junet Records or BME, and he got to elaborate on this topic further during an interview with ThisIs50.com. Scrappy felt like there were too many egos involved in the creation of his album, and as a result he was forced to make songs that he wouldn't usually make because there were too many people telling him what to do. Scrappy mentioned the fact that 50 Cent wanted to move at a faster pace than Little John. 50 was always in the studio recording music. He recorded a lot of songs with Scrappy and he wanted to get them out as soon as possible. However, it appears Little John's involvement slowed down the entire process. Little John was taking his time to give the go ahead. Maybe he was tied down to other projects or maybe he was working on other beats. Candidly speaking, 50 is used to doing things quickly. Little John was not moving at a pace that made him happy. And this made 50 start losing interest and Scrappy's project. I mean we did it. We made the album or whatever. I worked with 50 and we did like 12 songs in one week. Me and Little John, we worked but how it ended up being, like everybody had ego problems in the situation. Everybody had that, what they wanted from the situation. My situation and 50, he was on some stuff like, I done some songs with you, I'm ready to go you know, John ain't moving fast enough. 50 like, I like to keep going. He said that a couple of times and I knew what he was talking about, but it was just an ego thing. It appears Scrappy regrets not doing the album with 50 and 50 alone. He now realizes that too many hands in the pot can ruin the meal and he does wonder what his album would sound like if 50 was in charge of the vision and direction the album was going in. Everybody had their hand in the pot. Chris Lighty want what he want. Tom Molly from Warner Brothers want what he want. 50 want what he want. John want what he want and I want what I want. Too many hands saying I want this to go over here and I want this to go over there. I like the first idea that 50 came up with. He was like shit John, we just get together and make Scrap the biggest thing out cause me and you together, that's crazy. 
This is an example of what happens when an artist signs a contract with too many people. The art usually gets compromised by the interests of each invested party. And when that happens, the fans usually get a watered down throwaway project that sounds like it was trying to please every demographic. Bread to Die, Bone to Live is a good project for what it is. It was a fair attempt to introduce Scrappy to the world as a G-Unit artist. But like Scrappy said, the album was all over the place because too many people had a vested interest in it. Lil Scrappy has been very active, he has a lot of mixtapes that got released during his time with G-Unit and he has remained consistently busy after his run with the label. In 2009 he joined Ludacris' DTP where he was supposed to release his second studio album called The Grussell. Uh, Russell. <coughs> That's the name of the album, The Grussell, you feel me, Grinding the Hustle. While on the label, Scrappy released an independent project through Real Talk Entertainment called Prince of the South 2. However, the singles off the album failed to hit the billboard charts and they didn't necessarily make any noise. Scrappy didn't spend a lot of time on DTP. His second album called The Grussell was supposed to be released through the label. However, the album kept getting pushed back to a point where it seemed like it would never come out. In 2011, Scrappy announced that The Grussell would be released in 2012. And just as Scrappy promised, he released the album in that year. Scrappy has an independent record label called Grussell Gang and his Spotify page gets about 460,000 monthly listeners. Scrappy's latest studio album is a project called Confident that came out in 2018. The project is surprisingly good for Little Scrappy standards. Songs like Confident, Counting the Money and Sauce God stood out the most to me. He seems to be still having fun with the music and that's always great to see considering he has been in the game for a long time. Now on a serious note, Little Scrappy was involved in a terrible car crash in 2018. He was driving home from the club in Miami when he fell asleep at the wheel. Scrappy recalls waking up because his homeboy Casino was trying to get him free and kept calling his name. The car had hit a pole and there was smoke coming out the hood. But luckily Scrappy and his friend managed to get out of the car in time and they were taken to the hospital where they discovered that Scrappy's only injury was a broken leg. I ain't had got high, I ain't get drunk or nothing. I was just tired and the doctors say tired sleep is worse than drunk sleep. Lately when people think about little Scrappy, they immediately think about love and hip hop. He's best known for his role on the show nowadays where he reportedly earns about 200k a season. That's it for me man, it's your boy Ali. What happened to Little Scrap in your opinion? Let me know down below. Also, if you have any of your requests, be sure to let me know as well. Peace.